So in between the torrential rainstorms, I thought I'd pop out while it's still sunny outside and give you a quick update on the garden. So I went to Tractor Supply Company for a curbside pickup with a mask on to get um, a 50 pound bag of dog food. And while I was there, I couldn't help but pick up some herbs they had for sale there on the, cur on the curb um, since I had a mask on and washed my hands and all of that. So this is chamomile. It's doing pretty well. It was just one plant I bought, and there were one, two, three, four inside of the one container that I split up and that it have grown significantly since then. We have spearmint and peppermint, and I'm not sure that I labeled which one is which right. I guess I'll find out later, or I could probably Google the photo. Some curled parsley, that was one container as well that I broke up. These are some seedlings that I'd grown in my winter sowing jugs that I just got too impatient and planted to fur um cilantro. This is some Vita Mache Asian Greens. I got some seedlings from, from my friend Craig. She mailed me a bunch. These are some extra kale plants that are just too big to hand off to someone else at this moment beyond the ones I already gave to my neighbors. I have some more growing from my friend Emily in, in jugs, um, but I thought I'd transplant them to this small container and then I would um, maybe eat them while they're still small because they definitely can't handle this tight of spacing, I've heard. Although, you know, this is all an experiment, so we'll find out. The, these are green raven zucchini seeds that I grew on a whim. Um, and they were just, they were overtaking the jugs. See how small those jugs are and how much these guys are taking up. So yesterday I transplanted them into bigger jugs. There's four in this one and I think five in that one. And they can't really handle cold temperatures below 40 according to my friend who lives in Oregon. Um, and so what I'll do is there's supposed to be some cold temperatures this coming week for in the evenings for overnight. And so I'm going to put them either in the shed closed to handle the frost or I might even just bring them inside overnight since they're such warm loving. Um, plants. I also bought some sage. You can see there I've blocked these on either side of the jugs to help um, prevent the wind because it's so windy today. We've got a, I think it's a tornado watch or something watch this today until five o'clock. So I put those there. Um, those are my potato sacks, which if you follow me on Facebook, you know I planted some potatoes in these cloth containers. The uh, greens section of the garden is doing really well. There's more of the kale, and you can see how big it's getting, having been in the garden alone. The carrot tops, which I need to plant some more seeds there. Oh, it looks like one of the kales got knocked over a little bit by um, today's wind. There's my beets. Look how beautiful this arugula looks. I mean, these are getting real big. I've been picking six to ten a day for our sandwiches along with some lettuce leaves where that clump that I planted and there's been plenty for sandwiches and even mixing into salads for salad greens. Not a whole lot new stuff happening with the tomatoes. One interesting observation. So I realized after I did, after I designed the garden that this is normally the place the water flows downhill from the other houses. So I put that um, stone fencing block there as a temporary solution to keep the puddle from kind of overtaking the strawberry garden and it ends up now flowing down here puddling a little bit in front of this and then flowing down through where the step is and underneath the shed to the neighbor's house so it's found its way out which makes me quite happy um but yeah there's gonna be some water issues i gotta figure out later and part of it is probably me just not having cleared a space for water to get through at the moment Here's the peas. I transplanted last week some very small seedlings because I've realized if you transplant them earlier, as long as the weather's right, they tend to do better than when they have really long roots that you're gonna disturb, especially for peas. So you can see how the coloring on those is so nice. Whereas some of these still have some yellowing and those are the ones I planted three weeks ago or so. But they're growing, some of them are growing pretty high. Let's see, that one right there has uh, grown pretty high and the Swiss chard. Look at these beautiful little radishes. And I just want to show you how excited I am. I see a little bit of a radish starting right there. Look how exciting that is. 
I totally want to take it out and see the size. But I know they're not supposed to be ready for at least a month. And there's the second set of radishes. I'm trying to grow them in stages so I don't get them all harvested at once and don't know what to do with them. So we're going to have more radishes. And then I, I realized later on that I accidentally planted my nasturtiums in the wrong garden bed. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well do something else here. So I had these seedlings I'd also grown on a whim. You'll hear that theme a lot from here on um, in the winter sowing jugs. It's Kamatsuna greens. And have you ever seen like bok choy, like mini or Asian bok choy greens? That's kind of what these are supposed to end up looking like in the end. And those, um, and they're fairly fast growing, I think 45 days. So by mid-May, we will have some beautiful, fingers crossed, bok choy plants. One concern I have with my, what I'm still hoping are um, my bachelor's buttons flowers. And this is here because I'd put cloth down, freezing cloth down to keep the cloth, bricks on it to keep the cloth down um, earlier. But you can see the plants are doing okay. But this, see how, see how smooth this ground is here? This is where the water floods down. And I suspect I'm going to need to either plant plants here that really like wet, flooded areas and can handle that, um, or I might have to just leave that section sort of unplanted and let these native, non-native invasive plants, which are not that hard to control. Last year I had a whole bunch and they came back, but they're not that hard to pull away. And they have these beautiful little flowers. I forgot what they're called, but I can let them take over a little bit. So that's pretty much where we are. Here's the dogs enjoying the sun and the noise from the neighbors. And uh, I'll check back in in a week or two when hopefully maybe this next weekend or the week after I will be um, transplanting the warm weather vegetables. See you next time. Please like or subscribe. Hi River. Hi Lilu. Say hello.